Welcome to Let's Write This Movie, where we write a screenplay while sharing the process with the internet. I am your screenwriter, Renee Garcia. And I'm your collaborator, Brian Glass. Now, let's write this movie. Hey, Brian, how are you today? Renee, I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, you know, there was a time when we started this that I could still feel fresh after work and do our recording. Yeah. And uh, I think that was because my job at the time was less demanding. And now it's just like, um, this is just a continuation of my work day. It's not quite the vacation that uh, recording these uh, felt like before. But that's okay, because I'm motivated. Well, I'm glad to be a burden. <laughs> it's not you, Brian. It's not you. It's my muse. My muse is a burden. <laughs> Um, all right. No, man. I mean, you got quite a bit done this week. Yes. You know, it's, uh, what I said last time about this being an easy edit, uh, I think it still holds true. Like I came home, uh, I, I, I think I started late on Saturday and stayed up till like one in the morning to get the first 45 pages edited slash rewritten. And, um, it wasn't like I wasn't straining. I mean, I, I was tired because I, I started so late and I was working so late, but it felt natural. Uh, and I had to make some executive decisions on the fly. Um, so I had to discard some of the things we talked about, but we'll, we'll get to that momentarily. Beyond that, um, I'm feeling pretty good. I think, uh, the script is in a good place and, uh, I'm sure you're going to have some thoughts and notes. Uh, I want to apologize to any readers. Or, I'm sorry, uh, any viewers who wanted to read the script beforehand, I uh, just didn't have the time. Well, let's just say I neglected to post the new 45 pages on the website, but I'll definitely do that after we record this tonight. Cool. All right. So, before we begin... Uh, once again, just like to welcome everybody to Let's Write This Movie. We do have a website, and I encourage you to visit. It is letswritethismovie.com. Uh, here's what it looks like. I wish I didn't cut off the top in the, uh, the video, but that's okay. It says Let's Write This Movie at the top. And uh, this is where you can find our episodes um, and where you can find pages, blah, blah, blah. Um, all right. After that resounding endorsement, let's get back to us and let's talk about, oh, and please like and subscribe our show so we can grow our audience and uh, get the word out there that there's still people, still screenwriters who are trying to put out quality product and new storylines that perhaps uh, haven't been um, covered before in Hollywood. So, Let's talk about some changes, um, and then we'll get to, uh, to Brian's thoughts. So the movie had an original title when I wrote it back in 2010-ish, 2011-ish, and then uh, after that got destroyed, um, or rather the dream of that being made uh, the way I wanted it to as originally written, um, after that uh, dream died, I, became, I went a little mercenary, and I said, okay, I got to change the name, the names of some of the major characters, and it became Karina. And now that I'm super mercenary, I've changed a lot of aspects of the story. So I don't, I don't think it's a secret when I say that the um, original story was, was based on me and my life experiences. So there are a lot of me in this character, in Danny, okay? But now... Because we have to be sensitive to uh, what audiences are looking for. I have removed, I have made him a little more um, palatable, more accessible to a general audience. So he's no longer uh, below average height. He's now average height. Okay. And that uh, uh, is a, uh, that change I felt was necessary from a visual, visual standpoint because you can't have the romantic lead be um, physically uh, unattractive. Like, uh, you can make him unattractive to a point, but not so unattractive that 
women aren't going to want to see him be with someone else, right? I mean, you don't you don't ever see like a a midget as a romantic lead, right? Or a paraplegic or whatever. I mean, I know those are like extreme cases, but you have to have the male romantic lead be within a certain range. And I felt like the original character, once again, based on me, is outside of the acceptable range for uh, the dating world. Brian, what are your thoughts on that height change? Mm, I mean, it was so subtle in the script that, you know, it, it didn't really resonate too much with me. I mean, you called attention to the specifics of it, but I mean, it's never really resonated with me one way or the other. Um, so I think it's a, it's a small change that's not going to affect anyone's readership of it necessarily. I don't think that there, I, maybe, maybe there's a case when someone is um, in the process of reading it as a reader, maybe as a second level reader, you know, more like the assistant director or something um, up to a director who's already casting as they read it. And so that will inform that decision. So maybe at that, at that secondary stage, it's an important, you know, uh, concept. So you're kind of opening it up to more, more actors at that point, certainly. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really affect me one, one way or the other, but neither does the real life uh, question of heights. So, and I know what your retort is, so don't, you don't have to go there, but I will say this. What's my retort? <laughs> so says, you're tall. You're six one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course you don't care. What do you care? Would I care? It's like a rich person saying, Oh, I mean, poor people are fine. Well, you know, Anyway, um, there you go. And I would also say that uh, uh, I really enjoyed the station agent in which it, a, a uh, what's the right word, little person, yeah. is, is the romantic lead. Okay. It's the, it's the exception, obviously, to the rule. Yeah. And, and you know, I- indie movie, right? Not a, not a Hollywood movie, and that's the industry I'm, I'm aiming for. Um, uh, no, yeah, that, that, that my head automatically went to China. What do you mean? I thought China was the uh, was where we're trying to go for conflating the last movie and this one a little bit. Well, don't get me wrong, right? Like, um, well, whatever. I think China can still appreciate this movie. I mean, it, the guy's name doesn't have to be Danny Vega, right? It could be it could be Danny Chan or whatever. Easy enough to to change that. Um, and maybe maybe his concern about height isn't isn't the concern now. It's like, do you like Asian guys, right? Right. Easy, easy change, easy <laughs> change. Um, so uh, I just want to uh, respond to the, your your uh, comment about it being subtle. I think that even like a first level reader. Well, let's forget let's forget the the. Uh, contest reader, right? Like, I expect that this script will get past, uh, will get into the finals. And at that point, the final uh, is going to be read by a producer or someone who can actually do something with the script, right? And I think if they read it and their mind is set on a short person, it's like, okay, well, you know, I think they're already thinking, well, we're, you know, if, if the rest of the script requires that person to be short, then that really limits the, the romantic leads that would be going through their head. And I just don't want to distract them. I just want them to feel like anyone could play this role. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, go, any, anything else, Brian? No, but I think we should probably return to the first topic, which was the title, since there's been a third change. Oh, right. I didn't even bring that up. Absolutely. Uh, you're right. So um, – the movie is, is, has been changed from Karina to like in a movie. Now, maybe I'm not married to that. That's just kind of like what, what went through my mind. Um, I feel like it's, it's, it's said enough and, and maybe people have had that thought enough that that title is going to resonate because I had to step back from the story and really decide what is the story about, right? Is it about Karina? No. Like, we don't even know about her in the first act, right? We don't even know about her until, uh, you know, well into the second act. And it's not even like, um, you know, Danny doesn't even have a, a goal with her yet until way late in the second act. And so we don't even, we don't know about her or anything, right? Uh, it worked in the previous version, I think. 
because we set her up a little bit in the beginning. Maybe the audience doesn't know what they're watching through the home videotapes and stuff of Corina, um, but at least we get a sense of her so that when we see her again later, we understand, oh, that's the girl from the beginning, right? And they're, they're, they are watching uh, Danny and Corina essentially together in the beginning. I mean, yeah, they're, they're in separate parts of the world and they don't know each other, but we get a, a sense that they are, since they are juxtaposed with each other, there is that relationship, a relationship through, through visual proximity, right? And so we can tell, okay, these are the people that are going to, you know, it's a romantic comedy. So we know that these are the people that are going to somehow come together or pass or fail, right? Uh, throughout the movie. And right now, because I've removed Karina from the beginning, right? Now she's just this entity that comes in way late in the second movie or second act. So the point of the movie is now different, right? The point of the movie is, um, is this expectation that people have of things happening in real life that matches what happens in movies, which is an unrealistic expectation. I don't know that what I've written um, actually, like, it feels a little shoehorned right now. Like, like it's not all gelling together exactly, uh, but I feel like it's getting there. So we have, as, as I think we'll cover pretty soon, we have this, this uh, breakup in the beginning between Danny and his, his girlfriend, and she explains to him that she wants this movie experience of love, right? And here's Danny, who is an aspiring screenwriter, explaining to her that doesn't exist, right? Um, and then that kind of dovetails a little bit into his screed on, uh, on the notebook and how because women are getting this unrealistic expectation from that movie, or we'll call it maybe instructions from that movie, whatever you want to call it, guidance, that it's ruining love lives. Now, unfortunately, that kind of through line doesn't quite (laughs) continue throughout the movie. Like, maybe I could insert more. Like, maybe he's talking to journalists uh, or something, right? Or someone asks him, hey, what'd you think of that movie? And then he says, you know, he can kind of touch on it again. Um, You know, maybe someone says, like, you know, something happens in the real world. It's like, oh man, this is just like that scene in what's whatever movie, right? And so we we kind of bring back the like in a movie uh, idea or theme. Yeah, I think um, I agree. I think there's there's something there. Um, I'll be blunt with you about this, and I'm not 100 percent in yet, partially because I've been you know, reading it as a different movie title for a long time. So there's some inherent baked in prejudice towards the the original or the secondary (laughs) title. Yeah. Um, But I do feel like there's a theme, you know, that you, that you've mentioned to me, I I looked at it more as like the, um, the changes in perception from real love, uh, real love versus movie love, you know? And I think that it's clearly established in in the in act one with danny and what he goes through with uh i'm sorry what's her name again it used to be jennifer now it's young woman young woman that's why i couldn't remember her name <laughs> so I, I like that there's you know an, an instant tie in there uh to that theme and i think that thing i think you're right i think the theme is more broadly about you know ab- about um not just the perception of it but his journey through you know what he thought was love in the beginning and was told was not to what other people tell him love is to what other people show him that their relationships are and what love is to what he actually feels actually to what he feels and what he ends up feeling later. You know, I feel like that's a, I think it's an interesting journey that he goes on. Um, So, but, but in terms of like in a movie itself, um, I'm not hundred percent there yet. I don't know if that's really the answer, but I love that it pulls back. And it draws on the theme now because I guess when you when you hear Karina, you know people are going to really have to know what that is, you know, and they may they may mistake it for like Anna Karin what's Anna Karina Karina. Yeah. Um, I don't want them to make that mistake. Um, so something that does touch on on the theme, I think, is cool. Um, 
when I think of like in a movie, I think of, you know, almost like it could be anything at that point, you know? Um, and I don't know that that's where I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't know if it's as, as like, uh, as strong of a title that it's going to just stay in my brain. It just feels like it's something that lots of people say. Um, and, and it's, it's not like as, um, as unique as some of the other names that I've heard from you. So that's, that's kind of where yeah. I'm, I'm how, kind of, uh, how about, uh, rom-com? <laughs> rom-com? <laughs> yeah. People will know exactly what it's about. They will. Um, yeah. I think you're, you're just saying genre at that point though. This is, this is actually alluding to love. You know, that's why I like, that's why I like at least where this is going. And this may be the final title. So, I mean, I like at least better than rom-com because it's not saying, you know, this is a romantic comedy. It's saying that there's, there is a conflict here in the title, like in a movie. What does that mean? No. Well, this is something that has been defined to me by countless movies, you know, and here's the reality as portrayed in this movie. You know what I mean? And, And so what does that really mean? Like there's, there's a, there are at least some discussions that can happen there versus rom-com, which is um, kind of a, esoteric in a way. Movie love. <laughs> Movie love. No, no good. You know, I mean, I guess when, when I hear that, it makes me feel like this is um, a love that I mean, he denounces that like right away in his, in his restaurant scene. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and he doesn't, but he doesn't actually feel that later as well. Like I feel there's, there's, there's a part of him that feels like he's in a, that has that feeling of, of love or attraction or whatever it's going to be like in a movie, he actually gets there. You know, um, I don't know if movie love really, I mean, it's, it's closer I mean, it's similar to, to like in a movie. Movie love and other lies. <laughs> that sounds like a Woody Allen movie. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> and other lies. I like that. That's funny. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, all right. Well, TBA, Brian. Yeah, sure. TBD, whatever. Okay. Uh, that down uh you know i think maybe i should have got did uh, i forgot how we did this before like did we put up your notes oh i can send what i don't remember what we how we did this but that's fine how about you just i have the script up and yeah i have the script up and you can tell me like page whatever we can look at it and you tell me your notes. So maybe we do oh, a little... oh, oh, wait, wait. One more big change. I'm sorry. Let, let's uh, finish talking about changes. Let me get my face. Your face. My face. Our face. Like the thing. Um, so talking about mercenary, and we talked about in the last episode that uh, cigarettes will immediately make this a rated R movie. I've removed, I've changed Danny from being a, a smoker, a cigarette smoker, to an alcoholic. And I, I don't know that it works quite as well, uh, you know, because, you know, with cigarettes, the withdrawal is not, uh, not as severe as if you were an alcoholic. Uh, mm-hmm. And we don't, I, I don't really cover what happens to Danny when he decides he's going to quit drinking cold turkey. Yeah. Um, because he's worried that, uh, you know, Corinne, I'm sorry, Karina, (laughs) uh, might have a problem with it. Right. So I don't know. I feel like what I've written still works and I'm just going to gloss over the withdrawal period for, you know, I was, I actually started researching like what can alcoholics, uh, substitute alcohol with that can help them deal with the withdrawals. You know, like smokers, they have a patch, right? Or they have gum, right? So I thought, well, what, what can smoke, uh, what, what can drinkers do? There's nothing, nothing I could find anyway. Um, they just have to deal with it. So 
Yeah. So there's like this, this undercurrent now because of the drinking, um, which struck me in a slightly different way. So it kind of informed when he was on the pseudo date in the restaurant and when he was driving, possibly, you know, mm-hmm. and talking, yeah. and I was like, is this now explaining why he is like before I felt like his choice or, or how he was, was by choice and just who yeah. he was. Yeah. Now I feel like it's somewhat influenced because we don't know the real Danny because he's drinking a lot. Yeah. And, and I feel like some of the responsibility kind of drains away now. Whereas before I felt like this is, you know, this is who the character is, take him or leave him, which I kind of liked, you know, I kind of right. liked it a little bit more. Um, like there were no punches being pulled from that perspective, which I thought was cool. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate that more as well. I hadn't even thought about how people are going to react to, to the drinking. Um, yeah. You know, that people would would blame that for his personality. I mean, you know, w- w- when we lose the history in the beginning, when it's just one breakup, right? Um, I felt like that already, that also impacted uh, why Danny is the way he is. Um, because everybody goes through one breakup. That doesn't make you give up on love, right? Right. Uh, so, you know, I, that's disappointing and I don't know how to fix that. Um, but getting back to the, the alcoholic thing, maybe I just take out substance. Maybe that's not even like necessary to tell this story anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, we lose a little bit of texture to the character. I mean, we lose a lot of texture, to be honest. Um, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, I mean, he could become, he could become a weekend and holiday drinker or you could just leave it in there and we see how it reads until the end. I feel like, and see if we feel like it needs to be. No, you know, the, the fact that you brought it up, I mean, now that I'm thinking of it that way, um, yeah, I mean, okay. Okay. So we could do one of two things. Um, we can either remove it entirely or we add content that explains that he is a high functioning alcoholic. And so it, it, it doesn't seem to affect like that's our, our, our uh, excuse for why it doesn't affect his personality. tricky yeah i don't know what to tell you can he be addicted to toothpicks can he be addicted to toothpicks or we switch us to toothpicks i'm just getting uh, right there in the first version <laughs> uh not helpful it's just a joke oh okay um No, I, I'm, I'm not sure, Renee. I've, I, I felt this strangeness uh, as I was reading it around the alcoholic parts of it. And I only as we're discussing it am I realizing why in that I feel like it's informing a lot more of his character than I expected. So that yeah. that hurt me. Oh, okay. Well, look, I mean, I think at this point, rather than include it um, and, and try to make the rest of the movie work... Um, yeah, let's just get rid of it. I mean, I I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I, I so originally as as I said, you know, he was a smoker and there's a scene late in the movie uh, actually basically towards the end where he shares a cigarette with his neighbor and then we learn something else about his neighbor at that point and I feel yeah. like it's this just a nice moment, right? Where you know, Danny has wanted you know, it's about human connection that scene and he, you know he that's this his neighbor he speaks spanish danny thinks he only speaks spanish and so there's a language barrier there's a physical barrier because of their their apartment wall right uh even in the beginning when danny is like he's uh stamping his feet and pounding on the the shower wall right there's once again a barrier and what his neighbor is experiencing isn't like it's it's fear right so and then here at the end you know, when Danny, you know, breaks out of his shell to try to win the girl and, and is destroyed by it, he finally gets this human connection with his neighbor and they share a cigarette, right? And it's like, it's like there's so much building to that 
even though it's like a small part of the movie, the movie isn't really about that thematically, right? Uh, I feel like it's so impactful. And then he learns that his neighbor speaks English, right? And that his neighbor had had Danny, his, his neighbor's gay, and had Danny been gay, like, you know, this guy could have been into Danny, right? And it's kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's so much, so much there. And when we, you remove just a small element, like the smoking, it, the payoff isn't there anymore. So may, I was thinking with the drinking, Danny could reach over and they could share a bottle. But now mm. if he doesn't drink, right, then it's like, hey, let's shake hands. Oh, you speak English? Great. Uh, so we lose a lot of that impact. So then now it's kind of like you get to that point in the movie and the audience will be like, well, that's a, I guess it's a nice moment, but who cares, right? So I don't know, man. It sucks. It sucks, you know, when everything is kind of like all tight and then you just like remove this puzzle piece and expect it to still work. Yeah. No, I, I understand what you're saying. It certainly would lose the impact. Um, excuse my... Uh, my ignorance on this, but does the same apply for like occasional cigars in a movie or is it, is it anything you're smoking? Well, I mean, I guess this, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You mean for the rated R thing? Right. Yes. Any, any, any nicotine product. I know. <laughs> There's no vaping back in 2000 either or 2007 or whatever, whenever it was. Yeah. Ooh. I don't have an answer. Uh, me neither. I don't know. It sucks. Hmm. Well, um, maybe we should table it for now. Keep it in, you know, in mind discussion i think you know okay i'll I'll try and give it some thought you know after the show as well and see if there's there's a remedy here maybe the remedy is still within the alcoholic range you know and maybe there's something there we can we could fine tune it's just crazy right i mean the the rules like we can have this guy be an alcoholic he's a drunk driver possibly uh pg but he he lights up one cigarette Nope, rated R. Can't have the kids watch that. Unreal. Anyway, um, folks who, who are watching, I'm sorry, Brian, what'd you say? I just said it's unreal. I know, it's unreal, absolutely. Uh, folks who are watching, if you have an idea of how we can solve this, let us know. Or if I have the MPAA rules wrong, or maybe there's been an update, uh, you know, let me know as well. You know, if, if perhaps there's some kind of loophole that I'm not considering. I know historical figures, like, like, per- uh, yeah, well, period pieces and bad guys can smoke, right? The fact that Danny gets, uh, you know, doesn't really succeed, does that count as, uh, as him kind of being a villain? I don't know, you know, uh, but, you know, let, let us know if you know. Okay, Brian, I think those are the big changes. Is there, uh, let, let's get to your notes. Yeah, so I mean, the next big change is structural, and that has to do with the, the the opening of the movie, which was which has been reduced quite a bit in terms of the lead-in. So now we are uh, with with the young woman who used to be what was her name Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer. do you want to you want to perform this, Brian? Just just the part that is changed. No, no, I think it's fine um, because I only have a only have a few notes in it anyhow. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, now it's been reduced to this scene kind of st- setting somewhat of a foundation for Danny's persona. So my first thing um, is minor, which is midway through page two. Well, I should say this first off. Um, before, there was, there was a, an emphasis on both of the characters. We had Danny through those, those you know, early years, and we had Karina through those early years. So I will say that um, I really enjoyed that the focus was on Danny here. I like, I like that because this is the guy I'm going to be spending the movie with. This is the guy I'm going to try. And use. This is my hero in, in the movie. And yeah. I like it's about him. Um, so in the, towards the bottom of page, page, oh, I guess it's page one, huh? Page one. Uh, okay. it says, 
the young woman remembers something and hurries to the bedroom. Uh, it just felt like it was a little strange because he asked her a question and she just bails. So uh, either if she says something like, um, hang on a minute, you know, so he stays put, you know, at, at their doorway, or there's an action describing Danny's reaction. Like she hurries to the bedroom, leaving Danny confused, you know, it's because he's just standing there <laughs> in the middle of, in the middle of a discussion, you know? Um, so it's, it's a small thing there. And right. is when one script falls out and the young woman picks it up and starts thumbing through it, it did not feel purposeful when, when I, when I read that, it felt a little forced, like it just dropped. And so she's going to start using that to talk about where, you know, what she's feeling, which is kind of setting up if we're, if we're using like in a movie, it's kind of, kind of setting up that, that first theme. So I feel like if she puts them on top of the box that Danny's holding and takes the first script and starts thumbing through it and having that discussion with him, it's more purposeful. Like this is what's been on my mind. In fact, it could be even more like, um, you know, where she, it's, it's almost like she kind of gets to that point of, yeah, like in a movie, you know, uh, it, it feels like instead of just getting there, um, it's the point that she wants to make. You're the writer. You're the guy who thinks of these things. This is what I thought I was going to get. This is what I thought I was getting. This is like almost, this is the promise of being with you, Danny. This is what I expected. And when, I'm not getting this at all. You should know better than anyone that this is what I wanted. Something like that, where it's just more purposeful rather than just kind of happens as a, as a you know, through happenstance. Um, I like that idea of she's going to rush into her bedroom get those scripts, put them down and make a point. This is the promise. This is not the yeah. reality, you know, and maybe, maybe not quite someone that knows, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. That's kind of my thoughts on that section. Um, okay. And then, and then on page two, so this is, an, this is probably my biggest issue in the entire first 45 pages. And I don't think it's, I, that big of a deal to, to, to solve, but where the young woman says, yeah, but in a different way, she's talking about how she said, he said that she said that she loved him. Yeah. This is her response. And um, I hate to do this, but going back to previous iterations of the script, you know, it was somewhat expounded upon by him. You know, I don't remember if it was through voiceover or he was talking to someone, but here, um, here I was left with, what does that mean? I have no idea what that means. Does he know what that means? Cause I don't get, I really don't understand it. Number one. And number two, we're going to talk about it here. He's going to mention it in a flashback in one page from now. And, um, what was it? Who, who's the one who's, who brings it up afterwards? Um, Rebecca, Rebecca, I think Rebecca brings it up later too. So now we have three times where we're talking about, yeah, but in a different way. And I still don't know what that really means. So precisely. Uh, yeah. So it's it's meant to be that nebulous? Uh no, it's meant to uh okay, so I think um I think that you have never experienced that. Right? Like no one has ever said that to you. Like someone that has but not love. has professed their love to you and then at the end of the relationship uh, said, oh, well, when I said I loved you, I meant it, you know, like I love you like a brother, mm. right? Or something. Like you've never experienced that, I'm assuming. No. Okay. So I, this is anecdotal, but I think that uh, there have been enough people who have experienced something like that where um, rather than say, b just be honest, rather than the person who is, who is uh, breaking up with you, uh, rather than them being honest. Let me just get our faces here, because we're having a conversation. Um, they'll say something to make it sound like, uh, to, to make it okay with them, with their minds, uh, that what they're saying is still being honest, because they found this like weird argumentative or rhetorical loophole that, yeah, I may have said the words, but you misinterpreted what I meant by love, right? I meant it in, you know, in, in whatever way, which is what I included in the, in the previous draft, right? Where Danny, where, you know, Brian's like, how did she mean it? And Danny's like, brings up all of these, like, 
you know, like reading a good book, like taking a shit, you know. Um, I, I have removed that because I feel like now we're really writing for, uh, you know, like the peanut gallery, like, like, I don't know, teenagers, <laughs> like people who have no experience in relationships, right? Like, I feel like this moment is going to resonate with people because people use this kind of like rhetorical jujitsu to get out of what they've previously said. They don't want to come off as a liar. No, they're, they're the good person in this situation. And so it's meant to be confusing because people are always confused by it. Yeah. Okay. I know what you're saying. I guess the equivalent that I, that I can draw is that, you know, she's saying, I do love you. Just not in that way. That to me is like, there's clarity there because, because I have heard that many times in many different, you know, uh, from, from many different people. That's, that is a very common refrain. I've just never heard anything like this before, even though it sounds similar. So I guess that's where I'm getting hung up a little bit because it doesn't resonate, resonate with me. And it kind of stops me. Like I still, I still don't know what that means. And I guess as a reader, I'm expecting to, to, since it's a kind of a new way of, of, of writing that or reading that um, I'm expecting some sort of exposition on it or explanation of it that I never get, you know, this like the itch that doesn't get scratched. And then I'm presented with the itch two more times where I'm like, what does that, what does that mean? Is that what that means? Cause if, when you said, you know, love me like a brother, I mean, you don't want to put that in there, but of course I understand what that means. You know, yeah. I've heard that times and I know you don't want to be uh, writing what everyone else does. And I get that. So I guess it just didn't resonate with me personally. I don't know if it's a matter of, you know, you mentioned it's like, you know, my experience, um, but I've never been told I, just, I love you just not in that way, but I've heard that, you know, I've heard that expression. I, I kind of un have an understanding of what that means here. I was just a little bit lost, you know, whereas before the previous version of it, even if you feel like it was a little bit too on the nose or a little bit, you know, shoehorned in there or whatnot, um, at least I understood kind of a bit more of what he was, what he felt. So, I would just, I would consider it, you know, I mean, and I'm just one reader, but um, without it, it feels like it's a little bit uh, hanging there, <laughs> you know, ready for a little bit more explanation. Man, uh, I mean, I guess I, I could. I just, I like that uh, punchline, right? Like, um, she gives this BS answer and then door slams in his face and then we, that's that's it you know that's people's experiences well in my opinion that's people's experiences like there is no resolution for a lot of this like you leave you leave breakups or you leave relationships just like why 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 did that person do that and then you never get that resolution and that you know i guess i'm trying to capture a little bit of that frustration I, I totally, I mean, what you're saying has merit. I mean, that's exactly why I wrote this scene the way I did last time. Um, I, I, okay, let me put it to you this way. If, 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 said, if Danny said, but you said you loved me, and your young woman said, young woman said yeah, well, and then closed the door on him, I'd, be, I'd laugh. I think that's funny and unresolved. Do you know what I mean? Like, she obviously doesn't or there's there's a disconnection there which i think is funny because of the way he's just been treated yeah versus when i meant it in a different way it just raises these questions like well like what what does that mean mm. Do you know? so so it's almost it's not really closing like uh the door on the subject it's raising more questions that are unanswered and never never answered in the script um so 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 if she said yeah but not in that way that would have been okay yeah that's better to me because hmm. I think people can relate to that. Many people can relate to that. And it's, I mean, lessons. Uh, I think I would rather go ahead. I was going to say that, that it's, it kind of speaks to adolescence and how young they are. Yeah. Just be something that happens quite frequently. You know, like one person has a much higher, you know, uh, level of, of adoration of the other person. The other person has to put them in their place. So yeah, just not in that way. And you're just like, what? You know, I'm li I've been living here, and it's just a very, it's a very common thing. I think that most people um, experience, including myself, as you know, as a youth, you know, teenager type of love. 
Um, okay, so uh, I think uh, I would rather just revert it if uh, if that's the case. I would rather just revert uh, the dialogue after that to include, you know, the more pedestrian uh, explanation where he's trying to like work it out with Brian. And Brian's like, "How did she mean it?" And Danny's like, "Well, you know how people say this. That's how she meant it." Like taking a good shit, you know what I mean? Um, what's that? Yeah, I'm okay. quoting. I'm quoting. I'm not <laughs> swearing. I'm quoting. It's fine. That's why I look forward to writing a uh, a gangster, a black gangster in the hood in the future. Uh, I can't wait for that dialogue. <laughs> and he's all angry at somebody, another black guy. Can't wait to perform it, Brian. Well, you might as well throw in some cigarettes then, because I think you're going to be getting your R. Oh, yeah. At that point, whatever. Anything goes. I'm going to insert the whole, like, uh, the scene where where Ray takes a kid and is, like, using the kid as a club to kill other kids at that point. Has nothing to do with the movie, but he's just like, ah, boom, boom. You know, they're not even zombies. Supposedly not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're not even zombies, you know? He's just killing people in weird ways. Right. Um, Our- Okay. So I, I know we devoted a lot of time to it. Um, and I just felt like it was one thing that was, it was probably my largest hiccup on this as I was reading through it, that and the alcohol where I was like, okay, probably needs a little bit, warrants a little bit longer discussion. Um, some of these other, other ones do not starting with page three. So Brian says, I mean, it's the year 2000. Um, it felt a little bit on the nose. Like you're just trying to make, sure people will know what what exact date it is yeah so i i think it's apparent there with mp3 players and dvds and email and internet um although i said i did recommend uh just about everyone has internet in their home in their homes now you know as being kind of like a a date setter it's fine it's you know i know you're you're trying to set it it's not a big deal so just an alternative that's available for you okay say that again Uh, which one oh oh I wrote the alternative line. Oh, just about everyone has the internet right now or in their home. Okay. Because it's still fairly new. Fairly new. In in 2000? Fairly. uh, Maybe it's not quite as. um, That's what I'm looking for. It doesn't matter, Brian. We're, We're splitting hairs here. Yeah, it's a little thing. All right. So the, the second part of what Brian says there on page three, all I'm saying is that you're, you're young, blah, blah, blah. I feel like it doesn't tie to the first part of what he's saying. Like I didn't understand his argument. He's, he's setting, you know, he's saying we're in a different time and it doesn't really feel like it, it, it resolves into what he's actually saying. So what is he like, saying? He says, all I'm saying is that you're young. No, I, I know the words, Brian. I can oh. see them. They're on, on the screen. In fact, they're not on the screen for our viewers because I'm a... Mo- oh, that's the wrong scene, too. There we are. Uh, <laughs> what what do you think he's is the meaning here? Like, what is the point of this dialogue? I couldn't quite get it from, from this. Okay. Well, then that's a problem. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so... Doing two things here. One, the first paragraph uh, where Danny's talking about age and all that. Uh, so he's comparing. It, first, we're, we're establishing Danny's age. We're doing a couple of things here, or a few things, actually. Danny's age, uh, the year, and Brian's advice. So three things. Um, so the first half, uh, and perhaps ham-fisted. I mean, I was writing this at like midnight uh, <laughs> after a long day. Um, you know, he's trying to, he's he's explaining that, uh, you know, Danny's parent, or, or, so before this, Danny's saying, you know, I wanted to have a young love, right? And that's going to come up later when Karina says the same thing in, in the interview mm-hmm. uh, that she feels very fortunate for having found a love so young, right? So we see that there's this kind of like kindred spirits between them because they have the same goals. Um, so what Brian is trying to explain to Danny, who's 21 in this scene, is that, look, 
We have all of these things that are distracting us. Whereas your parents in the 70s, they they didn't have all of this entertainment. They just had like they just had sex essentially, right? So you would get married, you would have sex, and then you have a family. That's why you were so young when they did these things. But now, because we live in, in this digital age and all of this entertainment is available to us, why don't you just have fun? Why don't you just relax? Right? Don't be serious. Why are you looking for a committed relationship? Uh, obviously, I guess I didn't capture that because, you know, you're not, it didn't come through to you. So this, I think, needs to be reworked. I feel that, you know, like, uh, I, I feel like the first part at the top of the screen mm -hmm. is, um, you know, it's, it's trying to say a lot in a few lines. I'm, I'm just hoping that the delivery is going to, uh, you know, come through. Okay. I don't know if the whole, you want to write movies. I don't, I mean, that is the most shoehorned part because it's right. almost non sequitur, right? And it doesn't even like, like, you know, I, I my, my reaction to that, I had to write it in, which is, you know, Danny saying, ah, where are you going with this? Right. I mean, um, so I'm hoping Brian can just, you know, the, the actor can pull it off. It's like, I don't know what to say here. So I'm just going to kind of like ramble a little bit. Uh, and then his, his, you know, his thoughts will kind of crystallize in the second part. I know that that is not uh, a mark of a good script that I have to explain delivery outside of the script. So that I think needs to be revisited. Okay. Enough said about that. Um, the flashback that, that we just, that we're seeing here, my only comment on that is a couple things. Um, we just saw it a minute ago. So it's yeah. very fresh in our minds. So I don't know if it's necessarily needed at all because it flows very nicely without it. Um, but if you are going to flashback, then I would add something like there, like maybe Danny has a reaction that we didn't see the first time around, you know, um, just, just to kind of give us a reason to revisit it again. Okay, how about how about Danny says, you know, after the door slams in his face, the quote people is a quote. He's just like staring at the slam door in his face for a second, and he's just like, like you, what the fuck does that mean, or something, <laughs> right? And then right. there you go. Does that pay it off for you? Does it make it work now? Yeah, it's better because I now I'm getting. It. Yeah. yeah, that works for me. Okay. But he can't say fuck. He's he's gonna have to save that for the elevator. Unless the elevator, he's just like, fuck, and never like finishes it. It's kind of or funny. maybe he yells, he yells like, fuck, but with a PH. Uh, okay. Little meta. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, that, you know what? That, that would work, Brian, if we went with, if I was, if I did the original thing where he's uh -huh. doing like the, he's screenwriting these scenes and he's describing and we see his lines of dialogue coming up, and it's spelled with a PH. Oh, that would be so good. I got to remember that for a future movie. That's so <laughs> genius. Okay, continue. Okay, uh, page four. So, so Danny and Brian are having their, their discussion. Yeah. And Danny, fine, fire me. <laughs> There's no reaction at all. It's just like, but what about the box? <laughs> I was like, I know you're trying to truncate and not go too long on this. Yeah. Uh, but like the, I felt we, like we left some stuff out. So oh, I could add a action line. Brian yeah. is stunned. Or, or, um, but your schedule tonight and fine, fine, fine fire me goes away. And, you know, Danny in this, in the line at the top says, yeah, I think I need to, I need to go. I need to be alone for the while. Maybe that changes to something like, I know I'm supposed to work tonight, but I really need to be alone for a while. I gotta, I gotta go, you know? And then Brian can say, all right, but what about the box? You know, it's almost like, unless you really like that fine fire me scene, I think he needs to have so, some sort of reaction. Well, I think I would rather have Danny be fatalistic here. And he's just like, like, screw everything. I don't even yeah. need a job anymore. Right. Um, Yeah. I think I would rather keep that and have Brian be like, Brian doesn't know what to say or something. This guy under his breath. Yeah. There's a real Brian. <laughs> Renee. <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, so I like the little, 
I like the little uh, 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 paragraph of action about the box, you know, catch you Brian's eye. I thought that was, uh, I thought What's that was. What's in the box? <laughs> Six. Um, <laughs> so I like that that's kind of the beginning of the VO now. Uh, however, going down onto page five, you know, the VO, just from a really pedestrian level here, the yeah. VO is the article or the, the blog post that he's writing. Yeah, uh, not quite. It's a, it's a trick. This is the article he's writing in the future. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah that's where I was a little confused because I'm like, this seems to me like the article is now spanning seven years, which yes, at all. So, like, to right. have it and all of a sudden, you know, uh, a title card popping up kind of confused me as a reader. Mm. I don't know if it's the placement of it. Maybe it's because it is after the VO started already. So uh, I, uh, you know, the title card didn't bother me, but um, I was, I did pause here because I thought, will it confuse audiences that he's talking in the past tense uh, about, I have been alone longer than anyone I know, right? And it's like, well, you just broke up like an hour ago, right? Uh, you haven't been alone that long. Yeah. I was thinking if I really need to have this kind of like mirroring, you know, where uh, he's actually writing the future article or rather the future article is kind of decorating this past, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can kind of see why the future article makes sense because we've watched we're watching this journey to it. Um, I was thinking, you know, I can I can make the article feel a little more bridged, if you will, by saying, um, I've been alone longer than anyone I know, and add a line saying, even when I was with someone, I never felt like I was, you know, I was truly with someone else or something like that, right? So okay. that audiences can still think like, oh, well, this is the actual blog post he's writing, right? I mean, it, it the next part about like when you've gone this long and he's talking about like survival tactics and stuff, um, yeah. It still doesn't quite make sense. So maybe I just move this whole thing, the first part about I've been alone longer than anyone I know, and the net, the following VO to after the title card. Okay. In that case, we're in the seven year. Yes. We, we, so the only issue then would we'd have to get that. If you want to keep that, uh, the Brian lugging the box would have to probably move up to kind of in between where the no oh, let's see how would you even do that maybe i get rid of that too yeah if you want to get rid of it fine I gosh mean, so, that sucks i like that piece i there's like a, it too there's a way to bring it into you know as a kind of an interstitial uh during danny's apartment number one okay how about this Brian doesn't drop, doesn't get rid of the box, and he doesn't even ask about what about the box. Um, Danny takes it with him, and on his way to the car, which is parked next to the dumpster, and yeah. that's a nice little juxtaposition where you know to talk to make the audience understand his frame of mind, right? That he's in the dumps. Then he he is about to take the box with him, and he's like, "Forget that," and he throws it into the dumpster. And lights it on fire. Yeah. After pissing on it. <laughs> Frame of mind. With his, uh, with his alcohol liquor. That's what pee. I'm saying. Yeah. Like he's, he's drinking a bottle as piss is coming out at the same time. He's like, ah, refill the piss. And now we have a title for the episode, yeah. folks. <laughs> <laughs> refill the piss. I wish my face was on, on camera while I was pantomiming. Unfortunately, it's not there. Anyway, that's okay. Um, that's fine. I can rearrange that. All right. Uh, so now we have to skip ahead to page seven. Um, so Brian says, yeah, the indie, fi indie flick with um, starts with the G, ends with, ends in when it's Paltrow. It just kind of sounds dicky towards his friend, which it's I didn't dick. know. 
Yeah, he's but he's ruined not- this whole thing for that his friends set up. He's not a dick to any of his friends, though. Yeah, he is. No, who? He has no friends. He has Brian. Got Brian, Angela. Uh, what's her well, name? Well, look. Okay, this is a little bit of me. No, right? he's got. Okay, fine, 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 fine. This is a little bit of me. And what I'm saying is that I'm only a dick to you, Brian. And for all my other friends, are like I treat them really well. <laughs> because this, okay, this is not being a dick. This is showing that uh, he and Brian have this kind of relationship. That's why it's a special relationship. Right, right but it doesn't, doesn't. I read it as playful because I know it, but. Yeah. But I don't think the reader's going to read it like that. They could read it just like, this guy's such a, what a, seriously, dude, what a dick. Why are you being such a dick? But if he's playful, playfully starts yeah. with a G. How about playfully? Oh, no. Put a Riley? No, man. Come on. That's a mark of an amateur. An amateur, not dickish. <laughs> not dickish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another title for the show. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um, All right. I don't care that much. There you go. Uh, let's get to, I'll, I'll argue for the ones I really. Um, okay. So let's get to the bottom of eight. Bottom of eight. Hmm. All right. So Rebecca says, do you mind if I read it? And Danny says, do you find me attractive? And if I read that without hearing it in my head and knowing kind of the, the delivery here. Oh, you know what? You're absolutely right. There should have been some action where I, I, deleted it by probably by accident because um there's this there's a line there previously where danny's like uh uh hang on hang on i thought you trying to set me up um oh no there is no line uh Mm -hmm. i think it should be something like danny cuts her off you're absolutely right yeah that needs a little bit of something okay I wrote uh, Danny Pierce at Rebecca. She shifts in her seat, you know, just to kind of set that there's a, a shift now. Yeah. Um, okay. It's on the same page. <laughs> yeah. I mean that you could have sex with. <laughs> I couldn't see this ever. Oh, wait. Ever. Uh, I'm sorry. It should have been with me. Sorry. I missed. I left the word off. I mean, you could you have sex with me? Got it. Yeah. I mean. I understood what you're saying. I mean, could you have sex with me? Question mark. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just, I didn't believe it at all. It felt like strange as hell that he would ever, ever say this. Uh, um, because at this point he, he hasn't, um, he hasn't had the notebook discussion. So there's no reason for him to sabotage it. So if he's really just saying this, like, this is so out of the blue to me. Like no one would ever say this. Uh, with me? Uh, wow, that's straightforward. Sure. Um, so maybe <laughs> if I reverse the height question, right? Because that comes up next, right? Uh, where he's already, you know, coming off as like a, as a like almost like an interrogator, mm-hmm. right? Um, and he's already like he's just like change the subject to uh, you know is this going to work right I don't know I, what you need Brian like this is a way to, to do it and sound and kind of be straddling that line between super straightforward and kind of um, off putish to charming He's not trying to be charming. He wants this to fail. He expects it to fail. He expects it to fail, but does he want it to fail at this well, point? Maybe, yeah, maybe. He wants it to fail soon. I mean, maybe he doesn't uh, uh, want it to fail necessarily, but uh, because he has this expectation, he wants the expectation to be met. Let's put it that way. Now, look, I think a lot of this doesn't work now. Or, or work as well because we've lost the whole repeated uh, and escalating rejections in the beginning, right? Like in the previous version, he goes through um, unfair, unfair trials, we'll call them, right? From getting laughed at 
uh, by schoolgirls that, you know, he just, like, as a kid, he just wanted to dance with, to uh, essentially to getting used to go to prom so that he would pay for prom, to then being cheated on after he's organized a surprise birthday party for a girlfriend, right? To then this this college girlfriend saying, well, and when I said I loved you, I meant it in a different way, right? Like, we we experience a lot of pain for this guy, and that informs why he's just going to be like, okay, well, let's get this over with. Let's just go through the checklist. Am I tall enough? Am I good looking enough? What's your favorite movie? Right? I feel like it, you know, it all builds in a logical way to this moment. This moment by itself is absurd and probably unbelievable unless you have experienced those other things, right? So look, I, I guess what I'm saying is I kind of agree with you. Maybe it does now feel like, what the fuck is happening here? I feel like, you know, and I, I'm, I'm acting as a character. I'm not saying that myself, censors. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm watching a movie that's missing scenes, you know? <laughs> like, why is he a murderer now? What, ha- what? I thought he was a nice guy, you know, or whatever. Um, he changed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> why is he in a wheelchair? Um, okay. So, so I don't know. I don't know, Brian. I mean, yeah, I guess I could soften it. And now he's like a softer kind of guy. Like, um, okay, well, you know, let's just see if this works. Uh, Again, I'm saying, I'm saying he could say it in a less in a, in a way that would be that someone could put down as as being maybe not uh, dickish, but maybe just confident. You know, like okay, so let's see. So I'm cute. You may you may want to have sex with me. You know, it, where he's kind of you know gauging her reaction without asking the straightforward question, but still getting into those, those, those discussion points that are just not something anyone would say, especially in mixed company. So I don't mind that he gets into those areas. It just felt like, I mean, could you have sex with me is, is something that no one would ever ask. Well, I mean, I've asked it, right. (laughs) Okay. On, On a semi, on a semi date. Right. Uh, but not not because I was being a dick, but because I was it was a way to kind of be charming. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't come off that way. If if you could do it in but a way, that- I was trying to be charming. He's not trying to be charming here. He's trying to be matter of fact. He's like, let's boil away all of the niceties, right? Like, let's get down to business. Yeah, you find me cute, but what does that mean? Like, you know, let's let's get some kind of like factual milestone here that means something. Do you find me attractive enough to sleep with? If you find me cute, like a little brother is cute, or like a kitten is cute, that's not helpful. Now, maybe I could insert that dialogue, right? Maybe he could explain when she's like, wow, that's straightforward. And he says like, well, look, I got to know. I mean, a puppy dog is cute. Okay, so there's that. There's that. that's half of the issue for me. The other half is that someone who says, wow, that's straightforward, you know, is fine. But if saying sure... Um, really puts her in this strange, <laughs> strange light. Like this is someone who is a slut who's going to say that because no woman would ever answer yes. Uh, I that's straightforward. I, I, I. Okay, you know, and if he's stop, not- look, you look pretty tall for a woman. Just, just go straight into it. You know, then it's then it's at least at least it feels a little bit more like a, a, a real conversation someone would have in, well, an, in an awkward situation. Okay, look, I mean, first of all, I disagree that a woman wouldn't answer that honestly, right? Uh, Secondly, he's not asking, will you have sex with me? He's asking, am I attractive enough to have sex with? Right? I mean, maybe he could rephrase it and say, look, uh, I I don't want to offend your your, uh, uh, sensibilities or whatever. I just need to know, is there anything physically about me that would prevent you from having sex with me? Okay. That's easier to stomach in, you know, in this strange conversation. Well, fine. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess it's easier to stomach. I just, you know, we're writing a movie, right? We're not writing a transcription of real life. And so... We always have... 
Okay, I, I I understand, but I just I feel like the preamble always has to be said, right? What is acceptable for the audience? Is this like way out? Of, like, is this take you out completely? Like, uh, you can't believe the rest of the movie because these lines were said. I stopped when I read this. Okay. The other one, I kind of interpreted, you know, what, like before that, where it says, you mind if I read it, do you find me attractive? I kind of interpreted that he was going to go ahead and switch gears completely on her. Yeah. You know, I just add it, but I don't feel like without it, I didn't, I didn't stumble really here. I was just like, what the hell? What is this? This feels like it's, it's, it just feels like it's doesn't, it just, it didn't feel real to me. So I will not give you my response to the preamble other than to say that this is, I feel like this part needs to be reworked a little bit. Okay. Well, look, fair enough. And I'm, I don't want you to feel like I'm discarding your, your uh, feedback here. Um, but, uh, you know, now that we're, we're getting a little bit of an audience, Brian, um, if anyone who's listening to us talk can uh, give us your, your feedback on whether or not that's realistic dialogue, uh, let us know. Please. Okay. So we have to go down to the middle of 11 now. This is a minor point Uh huh. where Danny, uh, there's a beat and he says, I'll take the Chilean sea bass. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be kind of funny instead of the beat. If he, you know, at this point looks directly at Rebecca and says this rather than, <laughs> rather than looking at the waiter. Um, but you know, it's almost like I'm cutting you off. You know, you're, you're useless to me. And I'm going to tell you that by ordering and looking at you, it's a little bit of a, I mean, it's a little bit of a dickish thing to do <laughs> rather than just look at, at Carter. Um, it's a it's an option to take him a little bit higher to, to to elevate, you know, how he's feeling. Okay. The subtle thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was Until putting my, as, as I was reading it, I was like, it'd be kind of funny if he just looked at her or Brian, you know, which is less funny, but you know, Rebecca is just so pointed. Like, yeah. Look at you and con- and continue a conversation now that has nothing to do with you. Let's move on. Um, all right. So I mentioned on page 12, I, I highlighted that we loved you in a different way for the third time. So you can skip that past that. I think we've discussed that all, already. And let's see here. There are a couple little tiny, just uh, grammatical corrections. I'm not touching for this discussion. All right. So page 21. Oh, let's. Yeah. Scroll fast. Real fast. Boom. All right. So um, Adrian says, well, we, we'd like it. If you stayed, we won't do the couple thing. Yeah. Danny, embarrassed at the same time. Can't find the words instead. Uh, I just didn't understand why he was offended by that. Because his, his friends were trying to accommodate him. So I don't know if, I don't know why he would be offended by them or what they, or what they did or said. Yeah embarrassed i get or uncomfortable or whatever but um i don't know maybe you can explain that's me i didn't quite get that um well i i'd hate to retread our discussion on this last time um uh, so he oh gosh hard hard to explain let, let me ask you a different way do you feel like they're being offensive or maybe um they're they're not cons- they're being inconsiderate. No, the fact that that they it's almost like a pity thing, right? Like you, no one wants to be pitied, or maybe some people do, but uh, you know, uh, Danny in this case doesn't want to be pitied, right? Mm. And here here's uh, Adrian, um, trying to to pity him, I guess. You know, mm. like oh hey, well, we didn't mean we didn't mean anything by that, right? And here's Danny trying to you know explain to him like you don't have to apologize right like I'm gonna live my life you do you right and I'm gonna go and here's Adrian still trying to be accommodating um, and it's it's not easy for someone in Danny's position to explain that in a in like to explain it very quickly so that the other person understands and agrees right so. Uh, and I, you know, being embarrassed as well. It's like the fact that someone feels like they need to pity you. Yeah, you know, that's uh, kind of humiliating. 
You know, and it's like, it's not uh, something, once again, that can be explained easily in a very brief moment at the door. So it's like, oh, I'm just going to go. If you would consider changing it to humiliated, embarrassed, I think that makes more sense, by the way. Oh, uh, okay. I can't put that note in because this computer will, I don't think. Oh, well. Okay. Let's move on to page scrolling time. 45, page, and then we're done. The, the end of uh, 25? The end I, of 20, okay. Yeah, I just made a recommendation uh, for Rolling Stone that the last line just gets cut. Two movies in a row, looks like you're moving up in this world. You know, it does one of those deals. Mm. I think it's fine without it. Yeah, okay. Little thing. That that unfortunately will not move up the next part, but maybe I can <laughs> cut cut some more dialogue or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It can um, be though, Brian. It can be. Well, it depends on what you do before that. Maybe That's little... what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, editing is a war of inches or a war of lines. I'm scrolling. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, uh, gosh, I can I can never remember the melody of that Limp Bizkit song. Right? I would have done... I would... Scroll and scroll and scroll. That's it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like in a movie. All right. So the top of page 38. 38? Look at this. Look at this. We're oh, man. A lot of that's go. carried over from before. And I'm just like, yep, All still... Right. Still love this. All right, okay. You don't you know, like this conversation? On 38? Yeah. I do. The only thing okay. I don't... Actually, I only have one question about one line, and it All feels right. like a little passive aggressive. By On whose part? By Danny. I think I'm in love. That is going to um, start the conversation about with whom. You know, so yeah. when, when Adrian's... <laughs> Wait, who is she? Danny isn't sure if he should say. Well, of course he is. He's, he just started the conversation. Well, I'm going to talk about her. Well, I understand, but it's like sometimes people say things that uh you know, they don't realize that it has to be followed by something else. Right? Like you ever do that Brian where you just have like you're you're in a heated discussion with someone or like you know, uh you're in an argument maybe, right? You're feeling some kind of big emotion and you just, just blurt out this thing not realizing that oh, I got to follow it up with something because that's the natural flow of the conversation. Right. And then it's like, I'm with you on that. The problem yeah. is that the scene begins with, I think I'm in love. <laughs> There's nothing leading into it. That is his, you know, that is his point. He's trying to make, that's his theme. Let's discuss, which is I'm fine with. I, I just would recommend removing it and keep, you know, going through the whole thing. Okay. How that. about, how about, uh, I change it to Danny, um, <laughs> Danny Paw, um, how about I just throw in a beat? That'll save me a whole line. I just Danny took it up. Beat Corina Ray. Perfect. Uh. Beat. Uh, yeah. All right. I could cut out a couple more lines of dialogue to move up that slug line on 39. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So the bo the bottom of, of forty one. Wow, you kept all of this Danny Adrian talk, huh? I, I don't like know it. that this makes sense. I thought it did. No, the part where uh what if she doesn't drink? Come on, everybody drinks. Not the way you do. What about me. You want to bring person do it? You drink? No, I'm saying. You said everyone drinks, that's not true. Well, okay. <laughs> He's generalizing. Right. I don't drink. I don't drink either. Oh, please. You're a lush. I see the flask right there. Yeah. I thought about it for a while just because I thought it added character. <laughs> Seriously. Drink? Well, to have a flask. Who knows what's in it? Coffee. Water. Cold coffee. Yeah, water. Whatever, you know? Until someone, like, calls you out on it. Hey, pour some in my glass. I'm like, fudge. Oh, fudge. <laughs> but what would Danny say? Yeah. What would Danny say? <laughs> anyway. All, all right. right. So 
bottom of 41. Yeah. Dude, you know, anytime something like this is going to happen, I'm going to say something to you, right? Everyone oh, laughs. And Danny accidentally exhales a grape. <laughs> 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 what's wrong with that it's hilarious it's i feel hilarious. like <laughs> it's funny great my comment to you here and you do whatever you want with it but you'll read it says nyuk 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 yes yes you know what could make this a little more relevant is instead of this throwaway n- inconsequential Oscar comment, uh, mm-hmm. maybe when he goes to these roundtables or these interviews and he's talking to celebrities or whatever, uh, the movies that they're promoting are related to love, right? Like it's a, a drama, some kind of rom com, um, and they say a little nugget that's related to relationships, like a little truthism that we can all, that the audience can all kind of agree with, right? And it's coming from a celebrity, right? And so I think that adds, like, anytime you see a celebrity in a movie that you're not expecting to see them in, like a, a cameo, I feel like it always adds just a little bit of, like, light to the movie, right? Like, I was watching Deadpool 2 the other day, and the invisible guy, right? He gets electrocuted, and it's like, you just see this, like, split second of Brad Pitt. Sorry, everyone who hasn't seen it. But it's just like, oh, you're just like, wow, that's awesome, right? You just, it made them, it elevated the movie for me. Right. Even though it doesn't make any sense that it should. It did, okay? So if we can have Joe Pesci or whomever it is, I just feel like I threw in Joe because you want to have someone who can look at you and you feel like, you know, you've, you associate that look, that face with, like, all of the bad guys he's played in different movies, right? Of course. Um, it doesn't have to be him, though. I mean, who knows? The point I'm making is that what if he could say something funny about love, here i just don't know that i'm talented enough of a writer to to have two lines that's poignant that's also funny be talented because that's a great idea i love that idea okay i just i well you're gonna um okay i don't know brian i don't have i don't have any like positive experience of love you know to include it here and have it be funny in two lines no, you may need to get to three. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just saying. We're talking I think about it's... editing down, Brian. Editing down, not adding new content. Even though I yeah. did. If you're going to get that cameo in there, they're going to want to come in and say something cool and relevant and fun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's going to. He's got to have to. Yeah, he's going to have to say something cool. Um, okay. I mean, something that elicits a grape coming out of my. I mean, Danny's mouth. <laughs> Uh, Danny, who is eating grapes. There's the setup. Mm. <laughs> okay. Challenge. Okay. Um, so in the middle of 42, we get a uh, woman who is uh, Karina's, Karina Ray's LA management. Yeah. Uh, Danny stopped walking. Hi, how'd you get my number? I felt like it'd be better if there was something more you know, taken off guard or bewildered rather than just mm. stop. It sounds like he just expected it. But, he, but if he stops and he's has to, you know, check himself for a second. Stops for a walking shocked. Whatever. Yeah. Just something there. Shocking. To uh, page 43. We've got hot publicist. Yeah. Again, I had to go back. I'm like, is this the same? I don't understand why he's getting a number. And I had to go back and look. So if I have to go back and look, I'm guessing that the reader will. So I would yeah, suggest but it's capital letters, capital new character. I already and what I read was like I already know this person. What's he talking about? And I went yeah. back. If, oh, it's it's hot uh, journalist. Okay, maybe just a different description. You know, like soldier, How about a hot female. Well, I don't know, just something. I like publicist being there. You know, okay. it could be something other than hot. The word hot. That describes her in a equally. Well, know. I mean, that's the thing, though. It's like all of uh, Rolling Stone's um, infidelities, right? They're all word coded as hot, hot journalist, hot publicist, hot assistant later in the UK. So it's right. kind of like it helps guide. I was hoping it would help guide the reader like, oh, OK, 
hot, 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 hot. Not a big deal anyway. Well, look, it's something to consider. Yeah. All right. I would say that if you're trying to cut lines later, you're like, oh, I'm so close. I'm, I'm three lines away. I think the, uh, the haircut can go away. But for now, sure. I'd leave it. Well, you know, I, I, now that I'm thinking about this whole hot thing, I mean, hot publicist, this is the only time she appears, right? Maybe it could just be, uh, I could just say on the nose, you know, getting a number from another, from his latest infidelity or something like that. It's not oh. a huge. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not huge. It's All just right. something that bumped on a little bit. Okay. What's so, next, and, Brian? I would consider removing the haircut uh, action oh. and hair salon if you need to later. Yes. Uh, Honestly, there's like two things here that are like the same, right? Like he's rehearsing questions, uh, and then he's also uh, at the bottom of 43. He's going over his questions. So, I mean, it's not quite the same. It's a little different. Uh, maybe it doesn't even need to be broken up into, like, stages of the night, right? Mm. Uh, make it, 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 I mean, I don't even know if he needs to get a haircut or get, like, clothes. Maybe it doesn't even have to be a montage, right? Like, he just shows up at the hotel with a new haircut and clothes, and he's, we get the point. Oh, he really dolled himself up for this. Yeah, I mean, I think it adds a little bit of texture. Mm. I would say based on where you are at page 45 versus where you were, I mean, you've cut some pages out. Yeah. So if you, if at the end you end up in a good spot, I think it's okay to leave this because I think it, it adds to what he's willing to do for this and how, how important that this person is that he would go to the extent of cutting his hair and getting some, a new wardrobe. And I kind of I kind of liked it. All right. All right. Uh, so I guess my, my last note is on 45. Um, towards the bottom, when she looks back at the check-in room and beckons someone, it's Mr. Sir. Danny moves behind Aaron so that he's in Rolling Stone's view and mimics his condescending head shakes. Um, I didn't understand what that meant. <clears throat> oh, what? well. Be- head shakes. So <clears throat> um, Rolling Stone, in all of the, the scenes that, we see him in typically he's doing one oh, of two things earlier. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, because when he says Danny moves behind Aaron. I, okay. Yeah. So it happens several times, right? That's which is why you need the grape going into the coffee because uh, it's, it's hilarious, right? Like imagine Joe Pesci, the, the shot is Joe. What am I doing? Hang on. Pantomiming to nobody. Uh, Imagine the shot, right? We're framing, yeah, you know, and Joe Pesci's just like looking essentially at the camera, maybe a little bit off because you don't want to look directly in the camera, right? And then you have Rolling Stone come in from behind him. Like he purposefully moves in to like yeah. shake, you know? That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I guess I didn't know that's what that meant. So oh, I, Okay. Well, then I can, I can change that. I can. Uh, yeah, because I, like I like that payoff. That's fun. Yeah. So that's it in terms of my notes, man. Um, you know, I can give you some overall thoughts on it in that I felt that, uh, <clears throat> felt that the, I felt, I felt that it had a really good flow all the way through. Like it didn't, we didn't linger too long in any, any single um, scene. I felt yeah, like it, it's a little tighter. Yeah. It, did. it felt like it was just, it was really kind of moving along nicely. Uh, like I said, I really like the intro. Um, didn't feel rushed with the character intros. Like I didn't feel like we were getting overwhelmed with uh, any of the characters and their names. Yeah. Felt all super digestible. So, you know, honestly, I felt like it was a good rewrite. Um, you know, so I don't really have, I don't really have a lot of other notes, you know, that we didn't discuss because my other stuff I was going to talk about, we discussed at the beginning of the show, which is, you know, more thematic. Yeah. You know, one thing, none of them think about it. I think I probably need to just say in the action that Brian is Danny's best friend. Mm. So that it's not just like, why is his coworker all like in his business? You know, 
Right. Like, why do they have that relationship? That's true. Yeah. Things that, that I assume they they come in rear will not. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, good. Well, great. So, man, as, if I can... So, uh, this rewrite chopped down seven pages. So what I counted as well. Yeah. Um, if... If uh, I can... I'm assuming that the two musical numbers, <clears throat> you know, in the second half, is going to yeah. chop it down another 10 together. So, you know, that leaves me 13 pages of, like, just crunching. And I think I can get 13 pages out of crunching. And then, you know, even if I can't, I feel like I can go back into the first 45 and crunch there a little more. Um, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, these these kind of net new scenes that I wrote. And, you know, when it's a first draft of a scene, at least for me, I tend to write long. I, I tend to want to have more content rather than less so that you can kind of trim. Um, so, you know, uh, I was a little worried that I was, as I was rewriting, if you will, um, you know, I, I, I initially removed the scenes and I was like, oh man, two pages is like fell off. And then I was like, oh, but I got to fill it in with something. And then suddenly it's like inflated back to 120. I was like, no. <laughs> so that is, uh, that's a challenge. But I, I do think there's, uh, there's some meat there that I can cut. So, uh, cool. dude, yeah. I felt like the success, man. I mean, as the, as the first pass on the 45, this is great. This makes me feel like we're going to hit that deadline a month from now. <laughs> deadline. I, I feel, very confident of that, Brian. Um, so uh, let's let's not lose. Uh, I think you know, let's let's think about some action items here. We still need to solve the alcoholism, yeah, or whatever the vice is. Like, I feel like we need to come up come up with something because right now it's I think a problem. Like, uh, I, I could remove it. We just lose a payoff at the end. Do we need that payoff? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's enough that Pedro, the neighbor, the, the gay neighbor, just says, hey, you know, if I were her, I would have said yes, right? And then they just kind of like both laugh when they're two guys on their separate balconies. Yeah. I mean, I guess if, he, if we establish he's just he just goes out, you know, for air, to clear his head on this balcony earlier, you know, then I guess that does have a bit of a payoff. I don't know what other vices we could have. He's always gambling on his phone. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's got a, a porn addiction. Just porn. <laughs> Just porn. And he like, you know, shares his phone with Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um that's funny all right well i think that's it for me brian that's it for me man well fantastic if uh you enjoyed this episode please once again leave us a like and subscribe tell your friends that uh you know this is a channel that is producing original content and um who knows you know your input may be the input that gets this script uh, picked as a as a screenwriting contest winner and eventually gets made. There you go. If you'd like to see this movie being made, hit subscribe. Like us. We like you. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to quote the movie. We like you. Do you do you like us? Exactly. We um, like you. Do you like us? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so sexy time. Okay. That's enough of that. Um, we'll see you in the next episode, and uh, goodbye. Peace.